See, because that's very important. There's so many people that have so many opinions. And your wife would have your opinion. But your opinion holds no weight when it comes to the world of both sides. Hallelujah. Because I can have an opinion. My son can have an opinion. You can have an opinion. She can have an opinion. But what matters at the end is what the word of the Most High says. Hallelujah. So we are going to get into this because we are, there's a discussion amongst Bruce, amongst Christians here. Who is the Savior? Say who is the Savior? And we are going to find out what the word says. So, I always say we're going to build a foundation. Say build a foundation. And I like to come from this script because this lays that foundation that you can build upon. Right? Because whenever you're dealing with the word, it's important to prove the word by the word. So yes, prove it by the word. Yes, we ain't got to pull out no extra books. We ain't even got to pull out history. All we have to do is make sure precept, say precept, precept. is upon precept and line is upon line. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 9 and 10. It said, whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Then, that I will mean from the milk and drawn from the breast. So in other words, you got to come at this thing like a baby, say a baby. You can't come in this thing thinking that you know it all. You can't come in this thing thinking that you got it all together. Because every time I open up the script, I always find something that I need to fix. Hallelujah. Does anybody here just open the script and say, oh, I'm doing good? No. Because the script is always there. The Bible says it's quick and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the very division of the heart and spirit. Hallelujah. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Here a little, there a little. So that means you have to take this thing step by step when it comes to any topic dealing with the world. Hallelujah. You can't just think you're going in and oh, I know this is precept upon precept. Line upon line. Here a little, I know my used to simply know this, I used to script. There a little, right? You grow as time goes on and as you learn, and as you grow closer to the Most High, your knowledge and wisdom will grow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's pivot. Psalms chapter 3 and 8. We're finding out who is the Savior. And what does the Bible say about Psalms chapter 3 verse 6. It says, salvation belonging unto Yah. Say Yah. Yah. Salvation belongs to Yah. Belongs to one. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Salvation belongs to who? Yah. Yah. Somebody might say, you know, well, look, see, that, that's the answer right there. It's only to Yah. Well, let's see what the Bible has to say. Let's build Isaiah chapter 43, verse 3. Give me time to get to it. Don't take my word for it. Always make sure, because I can, I can put up anything right here. You can just believe it. Make sure I'm going line upon line. Say line upon line. line. Precept upon precept. Because anybody can tell you anything, anybody got any type of opinion, but the word has the final say. Hallelujah. For I am Yahweh, I am the Holy One of Israel. Thy Savior. Say, Thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy race, and Ethiopian Savior for thee, since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not, say fear not. Fear not. For I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the Lord, give up to the south, keep not back, bring my sons from the fall and my daughters from the end of the earth. That time is coming, hallelujah. We are living in that time right now. Every, even everyone that is called 
by my name. For I have created them for my glory, I have formed them, yea, I have made them. Break forth the blind people that have eyes and deaf that have ears, and all nations be gathered together, and let the people be assembled who will mark and declare this and show us former things. Let them break forth their witness that they may be justified, or let them hear and say, it, say it is true. With everything the world speak, it's true. If you are not lining up with the word, that means there's something wrong with you. Say something wrong with me. Something wrong with me. Ye are my witnesses, saying, Yahweh, my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe and understand that I am he. Before me there was no Elohim form, neither shall there be after me. Because Yah is one, say one. one. There is none before, there is none after. Why? Because he is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. He is the everlasting. Say everlasting. everlasting. That means he don't live in the space of time. That's right. That's right. That's right. Time couldn't, couldn't, couldn't hold our most high Elohim. He is beyond time. He is more, he is far events beyond time. He was before time. He set time in order in the old time yes, in his hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, verse 11, even I am Yahweh, and besides me there is no Savior. Say no Savior. There is no Savior. So we need to kill with this. Because right. there is confusion. Say confusion. There's confusion amongst people. Because a lot of people are asking questions. But we know that the most high is not. Say he's not the author. He is not the author of confusion. That's one thing we have to understand. Anytime something is not lining up with the world, it's always your interpretation of the word. Because God's word is blameless. It's perfect. Yes, we understand there was transliterations and things like that. But when it comes to God's word, his word has the final say. Say the final say. Final say. So, where's the confusion coming from? We have some Christians who claim that Yah's sure is the only Savior. Right? Because Yah sent them for that very reason. So most of the time you'll find Christians who believe in the Trinity, right? They believe that there are three Elohims in one, right? So they believe that all three are Elohims, and if you take one out, the other two can't survive, out, and they're all equal in power. Look, somebody say, lie. The Bible says, we just sung the song, right? Shema Israel, right? Yahuwah, El, come on, I can't say it, I ain't got a quote. But y'all know the scripture, Deuteronomy 6, I'm just quoting Deuteronomy 6 and 4, right? He said, I am one, say one. One. So, we have some, and I say some Christians, it's not all Christians believe that, right? We can't put everybody in one box. We got to use wisdom, say wisdom. We have some that believe that Yahshua is the only Savior and the Holy Spirit does his job and the Father does his job, but Yahshua will sit as the only Savior. Look at somebody and say, lie. lie. Because if that was true, then that disproves the previous scripture, which we just read, where it said Elohim is the Savior and there is none, say none. None, none besides him. All right. I know some of y'all think, but well, wait, but I thought Yahshua was a Savior. He is. We're going to get to it. Some of them might say, slow down. Just walk with me. We're going to get to it. And the New York men. Just like we have some Christians, we also have some Hebrews. Say hey, some Hebrews. See, we don't talk about Christians all day, but we have some crazy proofs amongst our nation, hallelujah. hallelujah. This ain't nothing new, it's been happening ever since the beginning. Y'all remember Corinna? Right? Our cousins are still walking the earth. We still got, see, 
Or, you know, sometimes I think, man, boy, then God, she just, or he just changed his name. And some folks still acting like cause, say cause. We have some rules. And usually these are not only, you know, Old Testament, I use that loosely, only believers who claim that there could be no other Savior but God. Why? Because of the scripture that we just read where he said that there is no Savior besides Yah. So, they say, how can the New Testament teach that Yahshua is a Savior when the quote-unquote Old Testament, we say to not the New Testament, we say to the Old Testament, how can the New Testament teach that Yahshua is a Savior when the Old Testament teaches that Yah is a Savior? The reason for so much confusion is because we have many that are reading the scripture for wisdom only while neglecting understanding. Come on now. Proverbs 4 and 7 said wisdom is good. Wisdom is great. Wisdom is beneficial. Wisdom is good to get. But it all got to get it. Get it what? Get it understanding. So wisdom is good eh, to, to get. The Bible even speaks of wisdom. Right? But in all your getting, get it and under. Look, somebody say you didn't understand. That is the problem and the reason why we have so much confusion. Because so many people are seeking for knowledge and wisdom, but it seems like most are not seeking for an understanding. And see, whenever you have knowledge. See, and we know the Ruach gives you understanding. The Ruach also brings you wisdom. But you can tell when it's not the Ruach that's giving you because you're so fucked up. Nobody can tell you nothing. They give you the script and line up with the word. But because of your pride and all that we know, we don't want to line up with what the word says. That's in the word says. See, knowledge is dangerous without wisdom. See, knowledge is good to have. But wisdom will let you know what to do with the knowledge that you have. Wisdom will tell you when to use the knowledge that you have. Wisdom will tell you how to use the knowledge that you have. Wisdom is important also. But wisdom is nothing if you don't have an understanding. Say an understanding. So, Let's get an understanding. What does the Tanakh or the Old Testament teach? Very good question. Some people might just pull out the scripture we pull. Because Yahshua is claiming to be the Savior, and we'll get to that later. And you must throw out the Tanakh because it teaches the exact same thing. See, if you want to throw away the new testament or the Berea Hadashah, because Yahshua was claiming to be a savior, because they just go grab that one scripture, but if we go line upon line, precept upon precept, prove this scripture by that scripture, then we will get a proper understanding of what the world is saying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's dig 2 Kings chapter 13. Verses 3 through 5. Let's see if the Tanakh mentions of any other saying. And the anger of Yahweh was kindled against Israel. Man, this, you know, you read throughout the word, you're like, man, Yahweh stayed mad at Israel because we were some stiff necked chokers. Couldn't tell us nothing. Right? Right? Coming fresh out of Egypt. Part the Red Sea, going through all the different plagues, feeding the man from that. And these jokers want to build a golden cat. How? In the Moses coming down like bro, I was only gone for 40 days. And y'all done built this thing. Stiff, or somebody say stiff neck. Like I like more so the song. Don't be stiff neck. That was a, that was a real don't be stiff neck. But Israel is facing the same problem today. Right. And he delivered them into the hand of Hazel, king of Syria. 
in the hand of Benadad, the son of Azel, all their days. And Joaz besought Yahweh, and Yahweh hearkened unto him. For he saw the oppression, say the oppression. The oppression of Israel. Even though Yahweh, or Yah, has sent us into oppression, or, you know, not even sinning because I disobeyed, he also hears our cries. Now is the time in these days to cry out to the Most High. Because every time Israel cried out to the Most High, he heard their cries. Because of the king of Syria oppressed him. And Yahweh gave Israel a what? Gave him a man. Gave him a king. Gave him a savior. Say savior. But I thought Yah was the only savior. There was no other savior besides Yah. Sound like if you're going to throw out the Maria Adesha, then we got to throw this out too. But only those with a lack of understanding. Say understanding. Understanding. The Bible says it's a way that seems right to me. But at the end of that road is death. Say death. That's why he tells us to lean not into our own understanding. But in all our ways, acknowledge him so he can direct our path. Hallelujah. Yeah. So he went out from under the hand of Syria, and the children of Israel dwell in the intention. Precept upon precept. First Samuel, chapter 14. And it's just a few. We just gonna just dig on these, then we gonna. Keep going. Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 14, verses 22, 23, and we're going to skip down to verse 45. Likewise, all the men of Israel which had hid themselves in the Mount of Ephraim, when they had heard that the Philistines fled, even they also followed hard after them in battle. So Yahweh saved Israel that day. So up here we see Yah saving Israel. And some will say, well, look, it's Yah saving Israel. But that's why you got to keep reading, right? Say, so keep, keep reading. Because context is important, right? Because if you don't get the pretext or the post-text, then you will be out of context. Say, out of context. Let's get down to verse 45. And the people said unto Saul, now I'll just to give you a breakdown of the story, what's happening is, uh, Jonathan, you know, Saul so, and them, you know, they was over there chilling. Jonathan and armor bearer got up and went to go do some business. And he had a serious armor bearer. He said, man, when you slay him, I'm going to kill him. And they went up and they was slaying the Philistines, just killing him. And the people said unto Saul, shall Jonathan, say Jonathan. Yeah. Shall Jonathan die who had brought this great salvation in Israel? So here we had Jonathan acting as a savior to Israel. What is going on here? That's two witnesses. Say two witnesses. But I thought Yah was the only savior and there was none beside him. See, if you don't get a proper understanding, you can run into people that can cause you to trip up over scriptures like this. But that's why it's important and all you're getting, get a understanding. Say get an understanding. We see Yah as the ultimate savior. Say the ultimate savior. Ultimate savior. But still using Jonathan as a early savior to bring salvation to Israel. See, you have to understand Yah. When he created man, Yah created a rule. He said, I'm going to take myself out of her, and man, I'm going to give you dominion. Say dominion. dominion. I'm going to give you dominion over the other. So I'm not going to do anything now here on earth unless I use a body. Say a body. body. Because in order to operate in this realm, you need a body suit. Say a body suit. Body. That's why demons are called disembodied spirits. Because in order to fulfill their desire, they need a body. Say a body. 
a body to fulfill. That's why the Bible says that as our time goes to and fro, looking and seeing who we may devour. Because the spirit realm can't operate in this realm unless it has a body. Say a body. So the most I said, if I'm going to do something on earth, not only am I going to do it, but I'm also going to tell my prophet before I do it. Because there's a rule that the most I said, mankind is going to give you rule and dominion over the earth. Therefore, I'm only going to use. That's why he, even, he said he looked to and fro to see a man who he can use to speak the word. Right. I give you more proof. Acts chapter 10. The Bible says that the angel came to Cornelius. Say Cornelius. Came to Cornelius. Guess what the angel gave to Cornelius to tell He told Cornelius to go find Peter so that Peter could preach in the gospel. Now why didn't the angel just preach Peter the gospel? Because the Most High leaves it up to man. Say man. man. The angel could have came down and broke it down and say, my mind, here you go. Here you go. I'm sorry, let me use my New York term. Let me use my mind. Here. So, the angel that came and said, hey, here, it's the gospel. We're going to bring it down for you. Here you go. And go out your way. But he told Cornelius to go find Peter so that Peter can tell him about the gospel. Because the Most High wants to use men. Say men. Man. Because in order to get things done on earth, he uses mankind, not so they can get glory, but just to show you how powerful he really is. Is. Uh, yeah. right. So here is Yah acting as the ultimate savior, but still using Jonathan as a earthly savior to bring forth salvation unto <coughs> Israel. Another witness, first Samuel chapter 19, verse 5, verses 1 through 5. And Saul spake unto Jonathan his son, and to all his servants, that they should kill David. But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted much in David. And Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father seeketh to kill thee. Now therefore, I pray thee, take heed to thyself unto the morning and abide in a secret place and hide thyself. And I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where thou art, and I will commune with my father with thee. And what I see, that will I tell thee. And Jonathan spake good of David unto Saul, his father, and said unto him, let not the king sin against his servant David, because he hath not sinned against thee, and because his works have been to thee were very good. Verse 5. For he put his light in his hand, and he slew the Philistine. Speaking of Goliath, right? right. And Yahweh brought a great salvation. Say a great salvation. Great salvation. A great salvation for all of Israel. So here we have Yahweh using a man to bring forth salvation unto Israel. Now notice, David is not getting the glory. They're saying Yah brought the salvation because Yah is the ultimate savior that's using a man as a savior to bring forth a salvation unto Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we gotta know something like, well, well, he's just him and him and um, she out this equal. And some, you're lying. Let somebody say you're lying. Right. It don't work like that. We're gonna get into it. Let's go. Nehemiah chapter 9, verses 26 through 27. Nevertheless, they were disobedient and rebelled against him. And cast their law, cast thy law behind their backs. Now I got that bold because that's Israel's main problem. We will forsake the law of the Most High. For so many years we thought we were doing good. We got into the church and man, I'm on the right track, not knowing that we were in a system that was setting us up for failure. Say failure. All these big churches being built around the inner city. Big huge cathedrals. But it's violence going on through in that neighborhood. Something is wrong. 
Everyone is, every other nation is succeeding off the church, but it seems like we just can't get over that hump. Something, let somebody say something is wrong. The problem is we have cast the law behind our backs. And because we have to, because we have done that, they say, and they slew the prophets will testify against them and turn them unto thee, and they wrought great provocation. Therefore, thou deliverest them into the hand of thy enemies, who vexed them, and in thy time of their trouble, when they cried unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven, and according to thy manifold mercies, thou gavest them saviors, say saviors. Saviors who saved them out of the hand of thy enemies. Here is the most high again, using man as a savior. Right. And all thy getting, get. So somebody say get an understanding. It's important to get an understanding. We're gonna tie it all together. See, one thing you gotta understand about the most high, he wants to get the glory. He wants all the glory. And he don't want no man taking that from him. He don't want nothing taking that from him. I was just teaching the other week. If Israel could have got out of Egypt so easy, all the most I had to do was just kill the Pharaoh. And Moses is the next in line to become the next Pharaoh. And then Moses could just set the people. And they said, okay, y'all pray. But if the story would have looked that way, the government would have got the credit. Pharaoh or Moses would have got the credit for setting the people free. So the Most High took them through plagues, took them through slaying red seas, I mean locusts, frogs, just to say, and we know the story, and Yah set the people free. Because Yah wants the glory. He can use you, but he's using you for is glory. Hallelujah. Let's go. We still build. Obadiah chapter 1, verses 20 through 21. In the captivity of the souls of the children of Israel, so possess that of the Canaanites, even unto Zerubbabel, and the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Sakharab, shall possess the cities of the south. And saviors, say saviors. Savior shall come up on the Mount of Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be yours. Here we have a gift. We need to get into the Barabbasha. This is all tonight. The Most High using other saviors to bring forth a salvation unto Israel. Yes, Yah is the ultimate, say the ultimate. He is the main Savior. But He uses chosen men to bring forth salvation here on earth. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, let's get an understanding. From what we just read, we see that the Tanakh teaches that not only is Yah the Savior, but he used men to represent a form of his salvation on earth. Right. That's what we just read. That's what I just read. We didn't even get deep. We didn't go grab the book. We just read the word. Look at my just read the word. Remember, you know, my sister go, Mama Brown. It says reading is detrimental to your age. That means it's it very hard to be stupid if you read. The Bible says it another way. It says, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. But see, he's not just talking about knowledge, because with that knowledge comes relationships, a relationship. Because whenever you have knowledge without relationship, you always get religion, say religion. The Pharisees and Sadducees had knowledge, but they had no relationship, say relationship. What else did we get from? The Most High God sends people to deliver Israel. Men were sick and ordained, say ordained, Amen. ordained by God to fulfill his purpose of physical salvation 
Honor. The Most High God is the main and ultimate Savior while using men to bring any glory on earth because Yah uses men to get things done in this physical realm. Alright. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go. Let's a parade out of shout to you something different. Because we have bruised that want to throw the bread house out, and we have Christians that just only want to hold on the bread house shout while throwing the Tanaka. But you can't have one without the other. You can't have a second floor in your house if you don't have a first floor. There's no second floor house to just build, and there's no bottom half to go on. But see, the problem is the terminology. Of it. Old Testament and New Testament. See, each time I use the word old and new, you automatically think that that old is done away with. If I told you and we drove by and I seen the house, I say, oh, that's my old house, automatically you're going to assume, well, you don't live here anymore, so you got a new house. But our problem is the terminology of how we use. It's not called new. Testament. It is a renewed, say renewed, renewed, renewed covenant. Remodel, oh hallelujah, remodel house. So it's not my old house, my house has got fixed up and it got remodeled. By who? The carpenter, say the carpenter. Mashiach. Hallelujah. 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 He ain't gonna preach nothing new. He said, I come to do my part. Let me, let me not even jump. Let's go. Let's build Luke chapter 1, verse 41 through 47. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. Now we know that's John the Baptist. Right? And Elizabeth was filled with the rock of the death. And she stayed. I with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And which is this to me that the mother of Yahweh should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of, of thy salutation sounded in thy ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from Yahweh. And Mary said, my soul do it magnify Yahweh, and my spirit have rejoiced in Yah. Say Yah. Yah, Yah my Savior. So here we have the Berit Hadashah that's agreeing with what the Tanakh says. It's calling, here's Mary calling Yah her Savior. So where are they getting this from that the Berit Hadashah is teaching something different. Somebody's lying. Say somebody lying. Somebody. Since Christians love Paul they love and they hate Mashiach, or you can't say they hate Mashiach, but he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. I ain't going to answer that. That's what no, that's not even. They, they won't click the video off. So let's come on. Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> Titus, chapter one, verses one through three. Paul, a servant of Yah, an apostle of Yeshua Hamashiach, according to the faith of Yah's elect, and acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness, and the hope of eternal life, which Yah that cannot lie promised before the world began, but have in due times manifested his word through preaching which is committed unto me according to the commandment of Yah our Savior. Yah our Savior. How are they throwing out the bread out of Yah when it's saying the same thing that Isaiah said? Somebody's lying. That's why it's important to get and not say and understand. Because reading is detrimental to your ignorance. 
Let's keep on. Paul said again. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 through 5. For this is a good and acceptable thing in the sight of Yah our Savior. Yah our, Yah our Savior. Who is all? Israel. Right. Because every time Paul was talking about Gentiles, he wasn't talking about other nations. Sometimes he referred, but if you're just reading it for knowledge, you're not getting an understanding, and you won't understand that. See, it's very dangerous to cancel out Mashiach. Because when you cancel out Mashiach, you can't get to the bar. Because that's why he said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. See, it is a order, say an order. And see, I don't know why Pooh's so good at this. Because we know in order for the other nations to get the gospel, they got to come through Israel. But it's mighty funny, we don't get the picture in order to get to God, we got to go through Mashiach. Because he said, if you try to get in any other way, you are deep and a robber. Right. Oh, we won't set the order of other nations to come through us, but we set up the order to come through Mashiach. You are a lie. That's why I say you're a lie. And the truth, if I say the truth is not in Because whoever denies the Son is not the Father. Well, this is a good and acceptable inside of Yah, our Savior, who will have all, who will have a few men to be saved, who will just have one tribe to be saved. All men. Now, we know other nations get in through the 12 gates. But in order for us to get in, we got to get that connection with Mashiach. There is no other way around it. And to come unto the knowledge of truth. Verse 5. For there is three Yahs. One. Don't pay attention, I mean, there is a trinity. No one else say trinity? One, say one. one. Ain't no trinity. Why? Because it ain't in the Bible, man. Ain't that easy to know? I used to be like that. I used to believe it was trinity. Until I start reading. And reading. Reading is detrimental to your head. I'm telling you, it's going to have to be deceived if you read. This ain't no special knowledge. We just read it. That's all we do. We just reading precept upon precept, line upon line, here and there. That's it. That's it. That's it. The baby can come up and teach. Look at these two people too. They can come up and teach this. That's why he said, in order to get this, you have to come like a baby. For there is one God. Okay. Okay. Because the next part about the bus at all. Because if Mashiach was equal with Yah, then he wouldn't have separated them at this sentence. Because we know that there is one Yah. Say one. one. It doesn't diminish what Mashiach done, but we have to respect Yah, who is one. Say one. one. Not like a three-legged stool and all those good analogies. I use them, but it ain't true. But to my ain't true. And one mediator between Yah and men, that man, Yahshua, Amashiach. To Titus, my own son, after the common faith, grace and mercy and peace from Yah the Father and Yahshua Amashiach the Savior. Wait, 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 wait. But it said Yah was the only Savior. 
Just like Mashiach, just like Yah did it in the Tanakh, he's doing the same thing in the Bereah Hashem. But this time, it's different with Mashiach. It's a greater salvation. Say a greater salvation. It's a salvation that depends on you, life or death. For me, it's a deal breaker. See, that's a deal breaker with me. What do you believe about Mashiach? Because if you deny Mashiach, you deny the Father. Because that's what the Bible, that's what somebody said, that's what the Bible said. See, we got to not only believers that treat the world like a buffet, but the world ain't no buffet. You can't pick and choose what you want to get out of it and what you want to throw away. But it's not only bruised, some Christians do the same thing. Because you got the bruised that only want to accept the tonight, and you got the Christian that only want to accept the bruised out of shot. But you can't have one without the other. The word is not a buffet. It's more like your mom putting a plate in front of you and saying, eat. That's why I say eat. And if you don't eat, I'm going to beat the... Come on. Come on. I'm going to beat the... I'm going to beat the black hole. Oh, you finished? Put it in the refrigerator. Save it for tomorrow. Oh, you got home? Oh, you want a snack? It's a snack in the refrigerator. What you get to eat, you have to eat everything that's on the plate. So we see the Most High being called our Savior, and we see Mashiach also being called the Savior in the same verse. What is going on? Yah uses his son to bring. Ultimate salvation. Look, somebody say ultimate salvation. Oh, salvation. See the salvation that Joshua and David and brought, man, that was cool. But the salvation that Mashiach is bringing, ain't no other way to do it. No other way. Matter of fact, he said he looked around heaven to see if there's anybody worthy. Wasn't nobody worthy but Mashiach. Some of y'all gotta find out the all John chapter 4, verses 3 and 34. Yahshua said unto them, My meat is to do the will of me. My meat is to do the will of me. What do you say? I say me. Him, Yah, that what? Sent me. That's the only time me is mentioned in that verse. Right. When he's talking about God sitting there. He's not talking about doing his will. Because even in the Garden of Gethsemane, Mashiach, you know, that flesh man started kicking. And he started to ask the most high, yeah, yo, maybe, you know, most high man, you know, it's getting kind of close. If there's any other way we can do this, you know, now's the time. This is kind of heaven. Matter of fact, the Bible says he sweat great drops of blood. So that his will started to kick in. Say, you know, you can do something else. He didn't say it. But that man Paul who started to kick in. Well, what did he say? He said, nevertheless, not my not my will, but your will. Be. Wait, wait, wait. But I thought he came to do his own thing. I thought he came and brought a new commandment. He ne no, never. The new commandment that he was speaking of is mentioned in Deuteronomy. So it's not new. Look, somebody say it's not new at all. It was just new to their ears because there was so much Talmud teaching that was indoctrinated into the teaching at the time when my when Mashiach came upon it. It was pure, say pure. pure, pure. John chapter 5, verse 30. I can of my own self do all things. I can 
do everything. I can't on my own self do nothing. Say nothing. That's what Mashiach said. If you go open your Bible for those that love the red, that's the red right there. I can't on my own self do nothing as I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just. Because I see not, say not. I should have just capitalized that now. I see not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. I said, uh, I said, I it's right here. Not his own will. This is Mashiach. So, let's get a precept. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15. Yahweh the Elohim will raise up thee a prophet. Say a prophet. From the midst of thee, of thy brother, like unto me, unto him he shall hearken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my, this is, this is Yah talking, he said I'm going to put my words in his mouth. Right. So, whatever was Yah was preaching was from Yah. Now. now we know that Yah never changes because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? And he changes now. Right. So, whatever he was speaking back then, we know when he came to Mashiach, he was speaking the same thing. Somebody say the same thing. Same thing. He shall speak unto them all that he wants to speak to. That's what he said. All that I shall command him to speak. And this shall come to pass. Here we go. That whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require you. So keep playing with Mashiach if you want to. Something is going to be waiting for you. Luke chapter 2, verses 25 through 50. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Ruach, Akadesh, was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Ruach, Akadesh, that he should not see death, but before he had seen Mashiach. Y'all ready? And he came by the Ruach to the temple. And when the parents brought in the child, Yeshua, to do for him after the custom of the law, at, after church on Sunday, after the custom of this temporary out of shop, to this Luke. After the custom of the law, then he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Yahweh, now let thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation. But she not is the ultimate yes, salvation. Yes, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He cannot be compared to any other man. Because what he came and did, no other man can do. He was ordained and chosen for such a time as this. John 3 and 16. Now we ain't, you know, we don't know this. Bring out the precept. For Yah so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. Say his only begotten. That means he is different from everybody else. You a son, I'm a son. He is the only begotten. Say begotten. Isaac was a begotten. Say a begotten. Ishmael couldn't get it, but Isaac was getting it. Because the promise was given to the begotten. Say the begotten. The begotten is special. He said Paul. He's unique. 
So you can't even put yourself on the same level as the Shia. Yah forbid. That whosoever, let me go back. For Yah so loved the world. So that means he's talking about everybody. Bring it out! Bring it out! Not be Bring it out! Okay. Okay. You walk into this. Lock the doors. Make sure nobody leaves. When we're talking about the word, world, yes, you got it's not talking about the world. It's not talking about everybody. When we see the word, whosoever, it's not talking about everybody. For example, if I say, whosoever, I'm talking Billy. Whosoever runs up to me right now, I will give you a hundred dollars. See, he would have lost. <laughs> Whosoever run up to me, I'll give him a hundred dollars. Now, somebody else from outside coming here and run, I'm not giving him a hundred dollars. Because I wasn't talking to him. I was talking to whosoever is in this room. The whosoever, yes, anybody can be saved, but there is a process and a order. Say, who's the one in order? order? Let's talk about Paul. Paul said, this is the God who deemed first and then to the Gentile. So the world that is, see, when Mashiach was talking, he was just grabbing this from Isaiah. Because if you read, I'm going to get the script on top. But Isaiah talks about how Israel is a world without end. And they shall be saved with an everlasting salvation. That was a precept. Let somebody say a precept. So let me get back to it. I can't jump off. But y'all so love the world. And here's what we got. That whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Why? Because Yah is using Mashiach as his body representation here on earth. Right. Our Josh always talks about how the Mashiach is the right hand of the Most High. He uses him as a body part. We are the body of Mashiach, and Mashiach is the body of Yah. It is a order. Look, somebody say order. You are not the body of Yah. Mashiach is. So you can't skip over Mashiach and get the Yah. Because if you try, you will be in the wrong. Acts chapter 13. I'm almost man. Verses 22 through 23. Say that again. Yes, Yahweh, Isaiah 45, 17. Go ahead and read that. But Yasharal shall be saved in Yahuwah with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World. world without end. God. God. World without end. Isaiah 45, 17. All right. World without end. That's all the Shiach was for. Because the Shiach stayed with the book of Isaiah. Matter of fact, that was the first script he read when he went into the gym. That's all we've got to score. Acts 13, 22 through 23. And when he had removed them, he raised up them daily to be their king, to whom also he gave their testimony, and said, I found David, the son of Jesse, after my own heart, which shall fulfill his will. All my, let somebody say my will. This is Yah talk. Of this man's seeking, have Yah, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a savior, Yahshua. To Israel. Not to the world. Let me get Raise unto everybody a savior. A spirit a spiritual and replace of God. That's no way in the Bible. Romans chapter 11 just kill all that. That's spiritual is what I'm talking about. He had raised unto Israel a savior. Why? Because once Israel gets right in line, then the other nations can get right in line because it is a order. Look, somebody say order. 
cartel rules, we can't skip over Mashiach and make me the lead of the nations. Because when we are leading them to, it is damnation. Because if you don't have the son, you ain't got the father. If you ain't got the father, you got nothing. Somebody scared of that. Acts chapter 4 and 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we shall be saved. Now if it's Jesus, then the apostles are the same. There's one on English language back. Come on, man. Come on. Somebody didn't catch that. That went over there. I'm glad that you're going to go away. Sit here. Got it. Got it. Got it. The English language is the newest language here on earth. So Paul missed it. Because he didn't call Jesus. But shouldn't we be trying to figure out, you know, we're not caught up in the names and all that. But it definitely, we know what that took to my say one, Jesus. Because there's a difference between translation and transliteration. Right? That's another topic. Let's get an understanding. The New Testament, or Berit Adeshah, and the Tanakh, or Old Testament, teach the same thing. You can't use one to cancel out the other. But we have rules that's doing it. And they're doing the same thing that Christians doing, they're just doing it with new flavor. Same gift, just different route paper. Yah is the ultimate savior, while he sent his son to bring forth his salvation on earth. Yahshua is the ambassador or representation of Yah on earth. Anybody know what an ambassador is? Representation of a kingdom. That's the one concept we gotta get. Kingdom concept. Because if we don't get kingdom concept, if we look at Yah's kingdom, like this democracy we have in America, we have misunderstood everything. Cause see, you can talk any kind of way you want about the president. But he asks you, and that ain't fine, bro. All right. All right. Mashiach, I'm like, right. get him up out of here. Yeah. Is Mashiach's way, is Yah's way, or no way? You're like, what? what you say? Oh, yeah, you can go, man. Yeah, get him up out of here. You ain't gonna have, but I got freedom of no. You have the freedom of speak, whatever you are with. See, the problem is, we look at, we look at Yah's kingdom like a democracy. It has nothing to do with a democracy. Because you don't run nothing in Yah's kingdom. It is not a democracy. Yah is the king, and he rules, and his word is the final say. Nobody cares what you think. No matter what it's going to happen, it's about what the world says. And if what I am not lining up says does, does not line up with the word, then I am in here. Because the word is a mirror. I need to make sure I can see my reflection in it. I need to make sure I'm looking right in the mirror. I can't blame no mirror for me being ugly. I ain't gonna blame the mirror. I mean, you ain't going to your head, you brush your teeth. That's why you, that's why you look like that. You cannot blame the mirror. All the mirror is doing is showing you who you are. The problem is, a lot of us are afraid to look in the mirror. When I speak of the mirror, I'm speaking of the world. Because we are afraid what the world is going to discern within us. Some of us praying for discernment. Y'all give me discernment, give me discernment. You need to discern yourself. Look at somebody say discern yourself. Because before I can fix you, I have to fix me. Look at somebody have to fix me. How I fix me is by going to the mirror, making sure everything is set and good, 
Now, like I said, there's no time I went to the Word and I said, oh, man, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> nah, every time I pick up the Word, there's always something I got to change. There's always something I got to fix because it is a double-edged sword. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By rejecting Yahshua, you not only reject salvation, but you also reject Yah. First John chapter 2, verses 23. Whosoever denied the Son, the same had not the God. He that acknowledged the Son has the also. So the way to get to the Father is through the commandments. No. It says through the Son. Now, it's not only faith in Yahshua, because Revelation 14 and 12, it tells us here is the patience of the saints. Those that keep the commandments of Yah and, what's the word saying? And have faith in Mashiach. You can't have one without the other. You can't do it your way. Yah is the ultimate savior. But he sends saviors down here to complete his task. To complete his duty. Right. Yes, the Old Testament teaches that Yah is the only savior. But with, with knowing that, you have to get a understanding. Say an understanding. Because if you don't get an understanding, the word will sound like it's contradicting itself. Well, once we get a proper understanding, how do we get a proper understanding? First, you got to let the Ruach lead you. Second, you can't have a preconceived idea of you in the world. Because if you have a preconceived idea, then the Ruach can lead you. Because when he gets ready to lead you, you're going to think to yourself, well, I wasn't taught that. No, that's not what Pastor said. That's what not what that's not what Morty said. You have to let the ru let the ruach. Let the ruach lead you into all truth. Say all truth. All truth. All truth. Not just some. All. And he ain't gonna give it to you all in one shot. It's gonna be preset upon preset. Line upon line. Here it is. There it is. Then you will get an under. Hey, hallelujah. hallelujah. 